Hola. Konnichiwa. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Hello. Hi, I am Bridget B. And welcome to Ready Sex Chat. I am so happy that you're listening to me today because depending on what day you're listening to the show, it is my birthday. In fact, this is the birthday week. So this particular episode of season two is my birthday. So whenever it is that you're listening to this, I shame on you for not listening on the day. (laughs) But it is my birthday week and I'm so excited. And It's definitely one of those weeks where, damn, it just came out of nowhere. I remember last year, I celebrated my birthday at Catch Restaurant with some of my best friends in Los Angeles. And my birthdays have been always one of those um, opportunities that I use to bring everyone together. I consider my birthday to be a national holiday. So I'll celebrate all all month and on my birthday day, all my best friends and people that I love so much to surround me is always the perfect excuse. I've done everything from toga parties to uh, ragers with um, lots and lots of strippers. I mean, I've done it all. So. Happy birthday to me. But on this episode, we're not going to talk about my birthday. I just touched on it. But we're going to get into a little topic. And that is real or what people like to consider natural versus fake. Obviously, if you've Googled me, if this is your first time coming across this podcast and or you've seen my Instagram, you pretty much have made up your own mind and assumed I am a walking cliche of the fakest bimbo uh, this side of Malibu. And that's totally fine. I own that very, very well. But I am about to undergo something that is just very personal to me and I'm I mean I I know that there are a lot of other problems in the world and I understand that this is pretty much a hashtag porn star problem oh boo hoo but it's my truth it's my it's the world I live in a world that is made up of visuals And my job requires me to be at a certain aesthetic. So if I was a plastic surgeon, I would be very much trying to go to school and learn more about surgeries. If I was an accountant, I would want to learn up on the latest tax laws. But I'm a porn star. So it's my job to look a certain way that fits me not anyone else and that's a that's a hard thing to do so as you're listening to this episode i will be undergoing my third boob job oh yeah listen i didn't even think even 10 years ago that i would do one yet here we are plastic surgery body tweaks i mean fuck even changing your hair color is such an extremely personal subject for just so many of us women and for so many men. I mean, forget it. Name me one guy willing to admit at their high school reunion or in the locker room with the boys or shit on Instagram that they got some man boobs removed, you know, or they had their their calves. Is that what it's called? The thing behind their legs underneath their, um, fuck, what's that called? Their knee. Yeah, the calves. From chicken legs to damn near T-Rex. You know what I mean? There's not a single guy that I know that is that uh, persuaded. What's the appropriate word? Um, Because there's many that are, and I'm not trying to generalize. But in, in my world, it's not common for men to be extremely vocal about their plastic surgeries and there are so many that have done eyelid surgery and those are small or even hair transplants like those are very small procedures but something where man boobs are removed or liposuction your average male who does it won't say he does he'll just say oh the gym did this for me and the gym got me this way well 
A few months ago, I remember scrolling through Instagram and I came across my feed, right? And there was like this mini movement, mainly females, and they were expressing this disdain and just rolling their eyes on how women should love their quote unquote natural selves and just be natural, 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 end quote. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. There is a lot more to this subject. So, of course, my big mouth, which, side note, the fact that it will absolutely get me into so much trouble one day and the fact that it hasn't already is shocking, but I'm sure I'm just jinxing myself at this point. But uh, anyway, so, of course, my big mouth responded to them, even though they did not include me in any of their conversations. And it, it should be a post on my IG now at this is Bridget B. And I wrote on Instagram uh, this post and um, let me find it right now. So I shit you not, here I am right on my post. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I'm not putting words into my mouth. But it's one, two, three, four, five, like six row from the top. And it says, what is the obsession with seeing people's natural hair? Seeing people without makeup. Why does someone have to strip themselves on here to please you? And on my um, caption, I wrote, sound off below, natural hair, natural anything. What business is it, if any, government or social group to tell you what to post on your personal social media? By reading these posts and by posting myself, this particular quote led me into this journey of evaluating the path that my career took, has taken, and is taking as we speak. Why... Do some very successful adult entertainers, whether it's strippers or porn stars, whatever, whoever, why is it that some of them are your natural girl next door and have absolutely no ass, have absolutely no tits, are super tiny and, you know, they, they rock and uh, completely have their own genre within porn and even mainstream as like, you know, the girl next door. While others have to literally change who they are in order to be successful. So why did I get these massive tits for my first boob job? If you're not familiar with them, Jesus Christ. They were so National Geographic. I mean, they were flopping around. They were so fucking huge. But would I have obtained the level of success that I envisioned myself to have had I not gotten them done? Phew. It's about to get real. It's going to get real and raw and personal, just how I like it. So grab that cocktail, get comfy, and let's have a good chat. Like I mentioned in the beginning, scrolling through my feed and seeing these posts for whatever reason triggered me. But why? I don't know about you, but I do all of my creative work at damn near three, four, five o'clock in the morning, and no cocaine is involved, like at all. Just pure organic. Ah, I am way too excited about this idea. I'm, I must stay awake and finish it before I literally forget everything. Type of mornings. Fuck. This podcast was created at like one in the morning after one too many bourbons. Just kidding. Gin martinis. (laughs) So one of these mornings led me to literally sit with my own thoughts and write this passive aggressive post and think about my career and who I am as Bridget B. So natural versus fake nowadays infiltrates so much of our lives, doesn't it? 
I mean, look at your grocery store, natural food versus processed. Look at your uh, girlfriends, natural hair versus weave, natural medicine versus pharmaceutical, natural energy versus gasoline, natural body versus a plastic body, a natural face versus a cake face makeup. And the list can just go on and on. And doesn't it bother you just how much emphasis one can be over the other? For me, I see it like this. You ready? Hold on, because it's a deep, deep statement. Who the fuck cares? Stating our opinions on a social platform is one thing, right? But shit, I'm voting in November to, in fact, protect such constitutional rights. But we digress. Hashtag stroke the vote. I say scream it like you are getting the best head of your life. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, This is my opinion. Yes. Say it. Tell everyone. However, Once you start imposing your ideals into my life and expect me to act or think the same, then we have a problem. These chicks were asking on Instagram to insert a uh, quote, false advertisement disclaimer on posts that are photoshopped, etc. A la Kardashians. Um, are you fucking kidding me? Why? Why? Like I wrote in my post, why should anyone have to be natural on their personal social media to please anyone? If little Susie wants to tweak her photo to look like she's half monkey, half goat, and say it's her naturally, who the fuck cares? The post would go on to say because, quote, we should encourage being ourselves, Quote, blah, blah, blah. So to those listening for the first time, I stand extremely consistent and loud on my personal opinions, and I am quite honest. I have always stated and will continue to state that it is not my job to make anyone feel anything, to teach anyone anything, and to hold anyone's hand, etc., I am an entertainer. I have sucked and fucked for a living amongst a million other projects. And at the end of the day, I get paid to entertain. It is not my job to educate anyone's children or to prevent anyone from cheating or stop anyone from looking at porn when they are consensual adults. My job is just to entertain. And if a grown-ass adult does not understand how social media at the end of the day should be viewed as just entertainment and just taken with a slight grain of salt, you know, much like porn should be, then they need better role models or better friends and family. Because if your team at home or at work doesn't uplift you, if your partner makes you feel like shit, then you have bigger problems than what a post might trigger in you. Everyone should be their own damn cheerleader. Wake up every day and say, damn, today is just going to be a good day and I fucking love myself. Oof. Look at me, I am looking good. So am I correct in assuming that at this point of the podcast, you're thinking, bitch, am I really hearing this from a fake ass, fake tooth, fake haired, fake breasts, fake tan, fake milf porn star? Yup, you are. As this creative um, energy, creative moment 
was occurring at 1 a.m. with my deliciously strong gin martini, it led me to go into Reddit, my Instagram comments, my Twitter, and do basically the one thing that I tell everyone not to do, the kiss of death, which is, in fact, read them. <laughs> it's it's often seen as a necessary evil, but the good, the bad, and the very ugly is all in there. And sure enough, I faced a subject I have had to dig myself out of. And they they were very expressive on the forums that I was reading and I was not surprised, but I was also shocked because I kind of made it a point to not pay attention to the negativity because negativity will be all around me always. And I choose to lead a peaceful, bright, positive, and happy life. Some people call it delusional. I call it just my life. Just It's just the world I choose to live in for my own sanity. So about a year ago, after 10 years of having the same, you know, triple E boobs, uh, a pair of boobs that so many fans have said they loved and enjoyed watching, I decided that I wanted to go smaller. Yep. My moneymaker, what most people defined me as, I was going to change. I wanted a different aesthetic. Uh, I was at a point in my career, I I was at a point in my life last year where I made that decision and I felt very comfortable and against everyone who would hear that I was in fact going into surgery against all of their wishes, I still said, nope, I'm doing it. This is for me. I felt large. I felt like everything I was wearing was a moo-moo. I felt obscene. I hated the fact that I would wear a plain old t-shirt and no matter what, my boobs were just there. Like, and as I was going through the journey of this second round of surgery, never once did I think my work would suffer or that my fans, whom I owe everything to, never once did I think anyone would hate them or stop enjoying me. Bridget B. wasn't just tits. Bridget B was her own entity. She was so much more than just huge tits. My tits didn't make me. They were just an asset. Right? Oh, no. Mm-mm-mm. Boy, did I fuck that up. Porn fans are a loyal and unique breed. We... In this community, in, in, in this world, in this genre that is ever growing every single hour, it seems, this form of entertainment provides a consistent form. It's consistent for the fans, for the most part. You pay X amount of dollars to see your fantasy girl, fantasy boy in a fantastical situation through your phone or through the computer or through your iPad or on the damn television. You know that at any point you can log in and see who you want to see in any specific situation down to the outfit just by Googling it. For example, Bridget B in oil wearing a bunny costume for Easter. Boom, right there, thanks to browsers. So what happens when that gets changed 
and what you thought you could count on no longer is in existence. Fuck, that loyal fan is all of a sudden hurt. Like, damn, now what? Now he or she has to search for something else. Because if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not, I don't have any details on the percentage, but for the, because I know how I do it, for the most part, it there's um, a journey and a, a sort of a road that we take to find that one particular video to jerk off to or to rub one out to. So we tease ourselves and then when we get to a certain video, it's usually the same one because you know it's going to get you to that orgasmic point at when you're ready. It's there. You know that the way he's licking her and the way she's sucking him, you know that that's going to get you to that point of ah, feeling so good. So what I noticed in the comments and in the forums it wasn't just mean, and they were so mean, and I'll get to why in a minute, but many were just hurt. They would use sad faces and say, you know, things like, I miss her old boobs, sad face. And to all of you guys who are fans and felt that way, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I disappointed you. So what ended up happening during this year with the second boob job is what nightmares are made of. In fact, every nightmare of every entertainer happened to me just about a year ago. The fact that I got botched the fuck up. I went from 10 years of perfect porn tits to the complete opposite. And of course, I'm not saying it's everyone's cup of tea. I'm not saying that they were perfect for everyone. I mean, fuck, I I couldn't stand them. (laughs) But they served me well and they were enjoyed. And some might say is really where my porn career took off about 10 years ago was when I got that surgery. And now, about a year ago, my second boot job, they ended up the complete opposite. They, they ended up scarring and unfortunately bottoming out. And that was around January or February. So wouldn't you know it, the circus of the fucking Rona started and with the snap, all movie production was halted and I couldn't have surgery to fix it. So for the past seven months or so, seven, eight months, I've been able to sit in my thoughts and think, Hmm, wait a minute. Why the fuck am I am I sad? Oh, yeah. My cosmetic surgery has fucked me up. I felt not like myself. I felt like I was no longer Bridget B. The pandemic and not being able to do movies and having these boobs had made me question everything that I've known for the past decade and around between January February and into March I infected a couple of movies and those were hard to do um real talk those were so hard to do because I had to put makeup on and I had to you know, fix myself and take moments of break and the the energy and the level of performance that I'm used to giving and the level of performance that I feel my fans deserve to be entertained with was lacking. So why did I continue to work those couple of movies if they were so hard to do? Well, they were hard to do aesthetically, but I was born to entertain. And I sound like a broken record because I've said that so many times, but it is something that I 
125% believe in. I am at my happiest on a stage. I'm at my happiest behind the mic. I am my happiest on in front of a camera in whatever capacity. And once I got onto set, I disregarded the aesthetics of Bridget B and I dove into the performer, the woman and the entertainer. So this surgery, the second surgery and the scar and the bottoming out was either going to, you know, take me down or I was going to be exactly who I knew I was. And that's fearless. So I didn't let it define me. I did my work because that's what I do. The show goes on. I will figure it out. Unless I'm on my deathbed or unless circus of a government tells us we can't, I will be at work because I'm thinking about a lot more bigger things than just me. I'm thinking about a crew. I'm thinking about makeup artists. I'm thinking about rescheduling and no one is guaranteed any movies. So work has always come first. And I've absolutely dove into that episode to go how I'm shocked. I even have best friends. So you know, I slapped makeup on the scars and I hid them and kept it going. That's when I realized that this whole time, Bridget B didn't exist because of the plastic surgery. She existed because of what I offered as an entertainer. There is a natural passion that doesn't come in uh, easy in this industry. It does not come easy. It is absolutely something that can't be taught. And if that's the only natural thing about me, then fuck it. Which leads me to where I am now on my journey to get my third boob job. (laughs) Why? Well, frankly, I just want to wear bras without my fucking nipple popping out. So it's just logistics. But I am so humbled by this journey of this year in so many ways, not just because of the circus outside, not because it has led me to be even more consistent in my personal and political beliefs, But although, sure, there were negative comments, there were also loving, positive, and honestly, some of the best fans a girl could even ask for. So to the fans that I've lost, I am so sorry, again, for disappointing you. But to the fans who are still rocking with me and the new ones I've made, thank you so much for the privilege of entertaining you through the good tits and the bad tits. (laughs) So at the end of the day, where we all lay our heads should really be the only voices that we listen to. Listen, opinions are everywhere, but it's the grace with which we listen and what we do with such information that truly determines the kind of person we are. So whether you are team natural or team fake, just root for your damn self. So the million dollar question that deals with the real versus fake, the plastic versus natural, why did I in fact get that initial big ass tits 10 years ago? If I have realized now that it doesn't define me and I am who I am as a performer because of what I can uh, give performance wise and the passion that I truly have. So why did I do it 10 years ago? Well, you know what? Good question. I realized at a certain point very early in my beginnings of my career that 
I was dominant and I had a strong personality. So my looks did not match who I was inside. So if I would have been more demure or quieter or, you know, such and such, maybe I wouldn't have gotten them. But because I knew I wanted to play the roles that felt the most natural to me so that I can give my best performance, it was a no brainer. And don't get me wrong, they were fun. I had a great time with them. But it's time to change them, obviously. And, you know, third time's a charm. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you pod. Follow me on Instagram at ReadySexChat. That's with an SK. SX. (laughs) SX. And enjoy a bonus episode on my OnlyFans at www.onlyfans.com slash Bridget B, where I'll be talking about and showing why anal got so much better after my fake ass plastic surgery. You won't want to miss it. It'll be going live on my birthday. So Thursday, October 15th. So see you on the next episode. I love you so much. And remember, life is just too fucking short, guys. Just do whatever the fuck makes you happy. See you next week. Come play with Bridget B. (laughs) Subscribe and go balls deep. Oh, yeah. Into the podcast. Ready, Ready, sex, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah.